Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first television attempt of uh, the Press Project International. And today I have with me Mr. Uh, Iraklis Bogdanos. Hello. Who is going to help me in interviewing uh, Mr. Kostas Lapavitsas. Good evening. Hello. Uh, Mr. Lapavitsas, you were uh, an MP with the previous Syriza government and uh, you decided to leave the government uh, after it signed for the bailout the, with Europe, with the Eurozone. I would like uh, to know why do you believe Syriza drew back from the initial plans to um, negotiate for uh, freedom from the memoranda? Um, first point I'd like to make is that we didn't actually withdraw from Syriza, we didn't actually leave Syriza, we didn't actually uh, split from Syriza. Um, Syriza, the Syriza government resigned, that's what actually happened. It resigned, it called new elections and then the MPs that had decided not to sign the new bailout agreement formed a new party. So technically we never split yes. from uh, Syriza. It's important to say that. Now, as for uh, why Syriza did what, what it did, um, you can have conspiracy theories about it, and many people in Greece tried that. I avoid these usually, and I'd like to be generous uh, in explaining why. My judgment is that Syriza had, had a completely wrong strategy about how to deal with government in the first place, and this strategy came to a, a sticky end and it collapsed completely. The strategy basically said, um, we will at achieve uh, radical change in economic policy um, by um, reducing taxes, restarting the economy, raising minimum income, minimum wages and so on. But we will do all that, we will achieve all that within the Eurozone. And we will do so by negotiating hard and uh, persuading, in a sense, forcing the lenders to step back and uh, comply with what we want. This was completely wrong, we misunderstood completely the nature of the Eurozone. And when that reality emerged, when it became clear that that's not what the Eurozone is about and the lenders would not step back uh, and that the lenders would blackmail the Syriza government, Syriza surrendered, basically. It surrendered completely and adopted the program of the lenders. It adopted exactly what it denounced previously. Good. Uh, after that, uh, you and the other uh, MPs, which did not leave Syriza, but in, in her, they left after Syriza resigned, you formed a new party, LAE, Popular Unity, and you <laughs> ran to the elections with this uh, party. Um, although the referendum that was held a little bit, uh, three weeks before the, four weeks before the election, no, five but, weeks. No, um, Two months. Early, early July, yeah. Two months before the elections, uh, gave a 62% vote of no to the uh, proposal of the uh, Eurozone. The, your party failed to, to gain the, um, access to the, into the parliament. Why do you believe this happened? I think this was entirely because of the um, problematic election campaign that the new party, Popular Unity, ran. I don't think there was anything else. Um, and that problematic uh, campaign um, had two, two elements to it, two major problems. The first, and by far the most important problem, uh, was the absence of a programmatic statement uh, on behalf of Popular Unity. Uh, Popular Unity said no, no to a new bailout, uh, thinking that this way it would continue the no of the referendum. But uh, a general election is not the same thing at all 
as a referendum. In a general election, you got to say no if you want to, but you got to explain what you're going to do. The popular unity never did that. It was a, a bad mistake. Uh, it thought that this way would avoid um, scaring people or whatever it was, um, and pre preferred to give just general slogans and so on. So that was a that was the that would never never persuaded people. It was a it was a bad mistake. The second element was of course um, communication problems. Um, Popular Unity spoke with different voices, uh, different people said different things. It um, sent out a message of um, exiting the monetary union if need be, but never explained how this was, uh, was going to happen. And some people within it uh, started saying that perhaps we don't have to do it. Um, and the, um, the people it put on the, um, um, on the, on the, on the, uh, on the lists electoral lists um, often convey the problematic image for the for the new party. It, it lacked freshness and it lacked uh, certainty. Yes, but uh, some people would say that uh, Greek people uh, have a strong attachment to the euro and uh, they are afraid that uh, magically, without uh, the euro, uh, Greece would uh, consider the third world country. There are all kinds of ideological um, scaremongering that has been um, developed the last few years uh, on the question of the euro in Greece, and you're right. There's, uh, emotional attachment and psychological attachment to the euro on the part of uh, the Greek population, the Greek people. And to a certain extent, the euro has come to form part of the identity of uh, modern Greeks. And loss of identity is always a big problem uh, for people. Um, so there was a real problem that, national, that popular unity had to resolve. And the problem, the problem is, very, is, is very straightforward. Popular unity wanted to implement a radical program for the re regeneration of country and economy, which anyone and everyone would, would agree is a sensible program, better than a bailout program. But for that, the country would have to leave the monetary union. That's clear. Popular unity had to bridge this. Uh, it had to be honest. It had to be frank, and it had to have a program of how it was going to do it, and it didn't. But you and uh, Mr. Flaspek are the writers of the program for social and national rescue for Greece, which is sort of a blueprint for uh, a Brexit, for an organized Brexit for the country. And this could have served as a plan, as a program for popular unity. Could you? Please tell us a bit more about what this um, program for national, for social and national rescue. This is work that uh, Heiner Flasberg and I have been doing for quite a while. We've uh, written uh, a book about this, and we developed the work uh, further uh, a few months into the old Syriza government <clears throat> because we could tell that the negotiating strategy of the old Syriza government was going to fail. Um, so we prepared this kind of. Uh, um, programmatic statement. The main element here, the most important thing here, is to show, well, there are three parts. The first is, sh is to show that the European Monetary Union uh, has failed, is a failure. It, it hasn't delivered what it promised to deliver, and it never will. The second um, component is to show that Greece has failed particularly severely within the Monetary Union, and that it needs a different, um, a, a different kind of economic policy. And we outlined what this economic policy is. Uh, managing the debt, debt default, lifting austerity, nationalizing the banks, um, intervening to boost the economy uh, through various steps of uh, um, public investment and private investment. That's the, that, that's the key part of the alternative program for the country. That's really what matters for the Greek people to understand that this kind of policy is better for the economy and for society. And then the third part was to say, 
this cannot be done within the monetary union and therefore you need um, a program of exit. You need some um, exit steps and we outline the technical steps for exit. Exit from the monetary union, in other words, is not the solution to the problems of Greece. The solution for the problems of Greece uh, is, is, is the program of development that we discuss in this. Exit is an important step, a necessary step in implementing uh, the broader program. I would like to clarify, this is a program for an exit from the Eurozone, for, from the Monetary U Union and not from the European Union. Yes, absolutely. We developed a program, um, a real empirically tested, um, empirically grounded and uh, applicable program for exiting the Monetary Union. This is a serious proposal. This is not a political thing about exit this and exit that and exit the other. Uh, if Greece wants to exit the European Union too, that must be examined seriously and there must be a, a serious economic um, program for that too. Uh, that's not something that um, we did and we were prepared to do uh, in the here and now. But should we follow the exit from the monetary union path? Would you have to count on the goodwill of our partners in Europe not to throw us out of Europe, the European Union? Well. I don't think it's a matter of goodwill. I think there are strong legal, um, it's a strong legal case for Greece remaining within the European Union if it wishes to remain um, while exiting the monetary union. And we, we offer uh, evidence for that developed by uh, uh, good lawyers uh, that have looked into it. And politically too, uh, there's a very strong argument that if Greece exited the monetary union, uh, it would have a strong political case for remaining within the European Union if it wished to remain within the um, uh, European Union. So I don't think it's a case of being forced to leave. Could you elaborate uh, on the positive side of uh, Grexit, uh, especially a kind of uh, maybe lifeboat mentality that could uh, uh, generate uh, a kind of new deal for Greece maybe? I argued for default and exit from the monetary union for Greece back in 2010. It's more than five years ago now. The situation then was very different to now. Back in 2010, Greece had a huge competitiveness gap uh, relative to uh, the rest of the monetary union. Default and exit would have been a way of dealing with the, those problems while avoiding the disaster of austerity that was going to be implemented and was implemented. That was never followed, austerity was applied, the Greek economy contracted enormously, we have huge problems of unemployment and so on. The situation right now is actually very different. This program was produced after the disaster uh, of austerity. F for us, the real problem right now and at the time of writing this uh, program was the lack of liquidity, the malfunctioning of the banking system and the continuing strategy of uh, fiscal tightness to, serve, to service the debt. Um, exiting would offer positive results in terms of freeing the country from the straitjacket of um, liquidity being able to generate liquidity by itself and allowing it to offer to 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 to, to engage in a different fiscal policy and in a monetary policy that would have been expansionary so these were very strong um, benefits of exit it would have freed the hand the, the hands of the country in applying an alternative program which would have, would have been impossible within the monetary union i hasten to add that right now several months into this now, it's, this is, it's months since we wrote that, the situation in Greece looks still different uh, to before. Um, wages have been crushed, the country has accepted a new bailout program, um, a kind of um, uh, stabilization has been created. Uh, the country will go through a recession this year and next, but the kind of stabilization has been created uh, within the monetary union. The competitiveness gap has closed to a certain extent by crushing wages. 
uh, Greece is now looking at uh, uh, at the situation in which it remains within the monetary union, but it doesn't develop essentially. Um, it's a situation of um, low and unstable uh, growth for many years. Exiting the monetary union must be put in new terms now, uh, bearing this in mind. This needs, the program needs um, bringing up to date, rethinking and redeveloping. I can see how if we were to return to a sort of a drachma, we would be able to uh, control what happens in the internal economy. We would be able to print money, lend money, and sort of control what happens here. But what would be the, the position of the drachma in comparison to the rest of Europe and, in fact, the rest of the world? What would be the monetary value? The drachma would be devalued. It's clear. There would be depreciation. And that would be one of the most important problems of economic policy. Uh, Greece would need foreign exchange policy. Uh, it would have to accumulate foreign exchange reserves very quickly. It would have to apply capital controls and uh, banking controls uh, immediately. Uh, it would face... Uh, they are already in capital controls. Which they are in place, uh, they are already in place uh, for no particular purpose, macroeconomic purpose at all. Um, and it would have to um, operate that to confront the, 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 the uh, uh, pressures uh, from abroad. Now, the devaluation of the drachma um, would have pluses and minuses. Uh, it would help uh, with uh, recapturing the domestic market and boosting exports, but it would create problems of imports and therefore the performance of small and medium enterprises, as well as covering the needs of uh, uh, households and so on for basic goods, uh, uh, foodstuffs and uh, medicine and so on. Primary needs. Primary needs, yes. Um, these problems are all, can all be dealt with through a minimum of uh, preparation which is important for this kind of uh, uh, strategy. The main advantage of uh, devaluation insofar as that would happen um, would be the opening up of new uh, opportunities for production. Um, the, the, the example I usually give is that of Finland in the early 90s. Finland devalued by 30% because he had to, to restore economic stability and it acquired Nokia. Nokia didn't exist prior to the devaluation. It was devaluation that created Nokia because it created the opportunity. Um, Nokia doesn't exist now, <laughs> but, but it did exist for, for, for a long time. Uh, devaluation has this effect, so I see no reason why it would never have effect in Greece to creating new opportunities. Do you have any, any idea, you're talking about the regeneration of the production, production activity of the country. Do you have any idea in terms of um, time, months, how long that would take? Let me first of all say that Greece is in an incredibly difficult situation in terms of longer term development. Greece has taken the wrong development path for 30 years. Uh, it has overexpanded the service sector. Uh, it has shrunk the secondary and uh, primary sector. Uh, it has a structural weakness in producing tradable goods and therefore uh, he has problems uh, with international trade and the balance of uh, uh, payments. Uh, he needs profound reform to deal with these problems. And the program that we are proposing here deals precisely with this, how to re regenerate um, the productive capacity uh, of the country. Uh, there are short term a medium term dimensions to this. The short dimension is very important and it would happen through the devaluation and the boosting of um, uh, 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 demand uh, in, in, in the short term. And uh, I'd expect the country to re-enter reasonably rapid growth um, within about a year and a half after the initial um, uh, transformation, the initial change, the initial turbulence. Yeah. Uh, the medium-term program would take longer. It would be a matter of 
three, four years before the results began to show, because you can't change the structure of an economy uh, very quickly. But that would, again, be absolutely necessary. That's the way to go forward. That's the way to boost the productive sector of the, of the country. What kind of help would we need from abroad in order to achieve these goals? Greeks must get out of this um, mode of thinking. It's about time that they thought, for, that they thought how they can do things uh, by using their own strength, by relying on their own strength. This would be a first for the country in its two centuries of independence, but it wouldn't do it any harm to start thinking about how we ourselves can do it. Now, if others can give help from outside and are willing to give help from the outside, that's perfectly okay. But Greece must confront the problems uh, using its own uh, strength uh, in the first place. Does this mean we wouldn't need help? Or that it will be it can be done. It can be done by using our own strength uh, al alone. Entirely. Alone. Greece is uh, Greece is a developed country. Uh, it's a middle-income country essentially, although it still ranks as. But it's, it's a middle-income country essentially. Uh, it's not a poor country. It has significant productive capacities. Uh, it has well-trained, uh, a well-trained labor force. Uh, if a country like Korea can do it, if a country like uh, other Asian countries can do it, so can Greece, yeah. Yes, but essentially you're proposing a kind of war economy without war, a kind of uh, coordinated efforts, a kind of uh, uh, general uh, uh, developmental uprising. Uh, it would be rather uh, difficult without uh, popular support. We've got a war economy now, and it's a war against the poor. The bailouts, the last five years, have been an all-out war against the poor in this country. No question, you just look at the, the data and the statistics, it's, it's a clear war of, by, by the better off, the middle class and the rich, against the poor in this country. Yes, I am proposing, uh, essentially, a kind of war economy, and that would be a war economy that would benefit the poor and the, uh, the, the working people of this uh, country. It needs mobilization of the poor and the, and the working people of this country. Uh, it needs social mobilization, and it needs um, a political agent uh, that can deliver it. I thought that the left represented by Syriza in its early days, would do precisely this. Syriza has sold out and it's now uh, a bailout uh, party, a party that belongs to the same camp as the rest of uh, the bailout parties and it's not really a party of the left in my uh, reading of the situation. It doesn't speak for the poor uh, any longer. So we need a regeneration of the Greek left, if you ask me, to implement uh, a program of this, uh, of this nature. Let me just say, for me, Greece is at the historical crossroads right now. If it continues going down the path of the bailouts, which this government is willing to do, Greece is destined for historical irrelevance. There's no doubt at all in my mind. This is going to become a small, marginal, poor, unequal place, weak, without geopolitical strength, and with its youth emigrating in large numbers. That's the future of the path it's taken. Uh, yes, we need uh, profound social, economic and political change. Yes, but uh, could this poor country that you're describing uh, become uh, inside the third bailout uh, politically sustainable? Uh, the situation could be uh, around this way for years or a kind of new uh, left agent could uh, mobilize the people again and uh, maybe could uh, uh, become a new series, a new uh, far left party. I think that's the real choice right now. I think the, the betrayal uh, by Syriza of its radical proposals and so on um, has basically meant that Greece, if it follows this path, it, it is due for many, many years of basically 
very difficult, tough and unfair and equal social and economic conditions. And can there be a new radical uh, agent uh, uh, emerging? That's the real uh, unknown question right now. Greek society to me looks tired and exhausted. Of course, the demand for social change continues to pose itself <laughs> non-stop. Uh, and I haven't given up, but Greek society has been badly battered by everything that's happened in the last few years. Um, uh, we, you don't give up, and I don't give up, and we will continue uh, for this new um, agent that will deliver the radical change that I think is necessary. You, you are talking about the radicalization of the society, and this and you're also uh, claiming that the future of Greece, as it is now, is a future of, of misery, of uh, continuous poverty and uh, misery. On the other hand, we hear some news, like as the IMF pushing for a haircut or a reprofiling of the debt, somewhere around 100 billion euros. And we also see that the policies of Europe might be changing due to the uh, refugee problem, which is emerging. They're using this as, a, as an excuse to, to lighten the burden in the in several countries. Do you think this will, be, will happen? Europe has been changing. If you, if you follow the Greek press, and particularly the European side, Europe is changing all the time. Now, it's only a matter of the next six months. Europe is changing. Uh, stick with it. And yeah, Europe is changing and it's changing in the wrong direction because Europe has changed a lot the last five years and it's become harder, uh, more rigid in austerity uh, and so on. Um, I don't think that there are any realistic prospects of easier conditions for Greece. The reprofiling of debt, I don't think there's going to be a haircut. Uh, the European Union will not allow it. Uh, the reprofiling of debt, which is possible, will not severely change uh, the situation, and it will certainly not change the austerity policies. And I don't think the refugee issue has got anything to do with it. Um, Germany will not alter the outlook on economic policy because of the refugees. So these are straws, clutching at straws. Um, Greece is set for a, if it follows the bailout path, is set for a very tough time um, ahead. I said previously, some kind of stabilization has happened. So we're not back in 2010. But this will be stabilization on a very low basis, um, without significant growth, with poverty, inequality and so on. So a few people will do very well within that, not the majority of the population. We will now have a short break and join us in a minute. Thank you.
And we're back for the last part for, of our discussion with Mr. Costas Lapavitsas. Do you have some more questions? Uh, I would like to ask about uh, Greek exports and especially tradables. Uh, do you believe that with devaluation, uh, devaluation could boost uh, the exports or is the services that could uh, help uh, Greeks more? Difficult question. Uh, I don't know that there are reliable studies that would show exactly what the composition would be um, with accuracy. Uh, my general expectation is that um, devaluation would boost exports altogether. The technical dimensions are satisfied, the martial learning conditions and so on are satisfied by uh, studies show that Greece satisfies them. So satisfies them. So I'd expect exports to be boosted generally. Um, what that would be for goods and services it's hard harder to tell. But the real issue there would not be devaluation. It would be the rest of the economic policies that would be implemented uh, that would seek to alter the balance in the economy uh, between domestic um, domestically consumed goods and tradables. Um, one of the reasons for, 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 for this poor balance uh, in the Greek economy is the lack of investment. Uh, in Greece needs an investment strategy uh, that would begin to change this balance in the first place. But that must also go with the relaxation of, uh, with the strengthening of, 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 of aggregate demand. And that's again what this program uh, proposes to do. So it isn't just devaluation, it's a matter of macroeconomic policy uh, altogether. That's exactly the kind of um, reform that Greece needs. And uh, this reform uh, could lead to inclusive economic growth. Uh, could uh, uh, everybody uh, get a place? Uh, following uh, Grexit, uh, is it uh, sure that uh, uh, unemployment uh, would uh, collapse? Economic growth and development with greater social justice and uh, in the direction of um, strengthening the, the social position of um, uh, the laboring strata and so on in this country is what is what we're about. That's that's really the aim of this uh, policy. There are no guarantees for that. It has to happen. It has to be implemented. It has to be made uh, to happen. For that, we would need, first of all, targeted social policies. We would need to raise the minimum wage, and we can do that uh, in steps. Um, we would also need to change the uh, tax system so that there is redistribution of income and wealth through the, uh, uh, the tax system. Uh, so these are th these are important measures for greatest uh, inclusiveness in, in, in growth and so on. Um, but the kind of um, mechanism that would deliver that in the longer term would of course be development itself um, that would secure greater employment. Yes, uh, I've got no doubt that unemployment uh, would significantly decline if these policies were implemented. Bear in mind that unemployment, that we need growth of at least 5% annually for several years for unemployment to drop below 10%. Uh, so greater inclusiveness and, 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 and higher incomes would come from this coordinated policy of boosting aggregate demand um, and, uh, and the different investment strategy, yes. Could this policy implement it uh, only as a national alternative or it could be a kind of European party that could serve as an agent? In a sense, this is the most difficult issue confronting Europe right now, not just Europe. 
the prevalence of the prevalence of austerity policies in Europe and other parts of the world, the United States and so on, is a remarkable feature of the last two decades, decade and a half. Why is it happening? Um, in my view, it has to do with the financialization of capitalism and the, the power of the financial interest. Uh, this is an issue that has not been discussed in Greece because Greek public debate on these issues is very poor. But it's discussed abroad. Um, so it has to do with the transformation of capitalism in the last several decades and the strength of the financial interest. Um, this creates questions of national policy compared to transnational policy. In Europe this has been dressed up with various ideological issues becoming European, Europeanism, Europeanness and so on, uh, which are to a large extent waffle. It's not, they're not true. They're very powerful waffle and people believe in it. Um, the more I see the events of the last six or seven years in Europe, the more convinced I am that uh, a national strategy is necessary to defend democratic and social rights across Europe. A national strategy must start in a, in a nation, must start in a country. Um, Greece then could have been, or could be, one of the places where this process begins. If it began in Greece, then that could act as a catalyst for other places. Uh, and then that could lead to a rebalancing of transnational policy across Europe. That's the way to go. I don't believe that we should start with the transnational and go to the national on these questions. So, uh, what, uh, in your opinion, could be the best uh, strategy of a new left party in Greece? Uh, uh, could they try to gather a, a more a bigger coalition uh, could they try to persuade uh, more and uh, more diverse people I am not sure what the best electoral strategy or strategy to acquire political influence would be. This needs more uh, thinking through and more discussion. What interests me more right now is the best strategy in terms of an alternative proposal for economy and society. And in this regard, the problem isn't just Greece, but Europe. It's an interesting issue right now across Europe. What kind of strategy for the left? What should the left say? How should the left position itself relative to austerity policies and to the idea that there is no alternative, basically. And there I think a left party uh, that really wants to make a change in Europe and elsewhere must uh, propose a set of policies that first of all go against banks and the banking interest, the financial interest, they hit it hits the banking interest where it hurts. So it must nationalize banks. We need a system of socializing and nationalizing banks. And second, it needs a, a set of strategies that basically applies capital controls so that it limits the free movement of capital. And third, a policy of boosting public investment. Uh, these policies taken together would give a viable strategy uh, in a national context and it would begin the process of putting the European Union on a different footing. Okay. So I have one more final question. It's a small one. What is the future for your party and especially your place in the party? Popular unity began with great promise. Unfortunately, the election results were not as good as they might have been and were now out of Parliament. Being out of Parliament is a difficult place to be in Greece. Um, it has an 
an advantage in that there is one Euro MP who is associated with popular unity. So that gives the party some leeway in terms of access to the media and so on. But it still is out of the great par parliament. Popular unity then must rethink what it does. Everything must happen uh, and must be reconsidered uh, afresh, anew. It needs a, uh, it needs a new... Um, um, it needs, a, it needs a congress, it needs a founding congress essentially um, and it needs to have it uh, as quickly as possible and it needs an extensive um, programmatic debate. Other forces must also take part in that. Popular unity must act as the foundation for a reshaping of the Greek left. That is the biggest task it has uh, and that's how, uh, that's what I would like to contribute uh, in the coming period. And uh, that con concludes our discussion for tonight. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Gorsos. I thank you, sir. Good night.